Hello there. Today I'd like to introduce to you the Hewn Hone Slide Jig. It's a jig designed to sharpen slide style blades such as the Moira 106. It will also sharpen hand forged blades and a variety of other makes as well. This jig is designed to be used in a whetstone grinder and it will put a hollow grind on your blade. Hollow grind is a really good starting point for a slide style blade because it's so easy to maintain. If you haven't already seen it, our edge geometry video explains this uh, in a lot more detail. Uh, but this jig will put a hollow grind, continuous hollow grind from the tang to the tip of your blade. And we'll just have a closer look at what that looks like. Another option to put a hollow grind in a blade is to freehand it on a whetstone grinder. And I know some excellent carvers that do this. The results are really good, but if you look at it from a technical point of view, they're far from perfect. Uh, the grind tends to end up being a series of hollows which are joined up rather than a continuous hollow. And also the grinds vary along their length. So the included angle or the edge angle is also varying along the length of the blade. This jig will put a continuous hollow from the tang to the tip and the angle is constant so your edge angle will not vary along its length. When you actually come to sharpen, you're going to be putting a flat across these hollows, so the final form of the blade is not really, or can't really accurately be described as a hollow grind. It's more a flat, flat bevel that the centre is removed. Of course, the most common way to hollow grind a blade is to use a jig. And I have used most of the jigs on the market. I've not found one which has been easy to set up or use and the results haven't been that accurate. Over the years, I've taught a series of courses where we've taught uh, forging slide blades and then ground, ground them. And the jigs which were available made this quite difficult and we ended up having to alter the design of the blades. So we were forging a blade which would fit the jig rather than forging the blades that we wanted to forge. Uh, it was really useful teaching these courses though because I've seen many students grind blades and I've seen the difficulties they've had in setting up and in actually using the jig. So when we came to design this one I could avoid these pitfalls and so we've come up with a jig which is really easy to set up. Uh, it's easy to use but the main thing is results are really repeatable. Once you've ground a blade in this jig, the next time you put it in you'll grind the same hollows every time. Uh, and that's the real, you know, the real secret of this jig is that it's so repeatable. Right, we'll have a look at the jig. Uh, you can see it's a solid metal body uh, which helps to maintain accuracy. So the centre of the blade will run down the centre line of the jig. Uh, the, the plastic disc is used to adjust the bevel angle. And one Allen key which is supplied will adjust both the grub screw for this angle adjustment and the two set screws uh, which are used to pinch up the jaws. Now the jaws will take up um, to, will go between two millimetres and slightly over three millimetres so they will cover most slide blades which are available. You can also see that the jaws are wider at one face than the other which means when the blade goes in it will be, be this way it will go in, the blade will go in at a slight angle, but it will actually present the edge perpendicular to the centre line of the uh, jig, which makes a, a more accurate grind and it's a bit easier to do. This jig has been designed to take uh, most of the common, commonly used slide type blades. So it will take the shorter Mora 120 fit in like this. It will also take uh, a variety of uh, smaller manufacturers that make these sort of blades. Um, this is one of mine. It's, got, it's actually got distal taper on so it's thinning towards the tip. Now, the jaws do want to sit parallel to each other but because you've got two screws by adjusting the tension it's possible to make, uh, to make it grip on a blade with distal taper. Uh, I'll be covering how to do that a bit later in the video. Um, but the most commonly used blade is the Mora 106 and of course it will fit this. So I'm going to talk about how to, to fit this one in the jig. There's a couple of, a couple of things. Uh, first is that the jig has been made to, uh, 
to grip, to grip the spine and it has to be quite close to the edge of the bevel which means that this face has to be very thin so if it's over tightened it can be distorted so you do have to be very careful of, um, of over tightening and, and also how you take the blade out at the end so these things I'm going to concentrate on we've purposely cut down this allen key so it's not possible to put too much torque on the screws so too much force onto the jaws so this is why we supply a cut down the blade uh, allen key anyway we'll put this in and it's best to put it in from the uh, from the tip into the wider side of the jaws and just slide it in until it reaches the end and it's probably easier to show it this way and it's best to butt the, uh, the jig right up against the tang because that way it's going to be in exactly the same place each time if you have it eight millimeters off or whatever then you need to put it eight millimeters off next time you grind if you put it to the end it's always going to be the same whenever you grind the blade so what oops and the other thing we want to do is to have the blade up against or well, the spine up against the two registers here so the angle is consistent every time you grind so this jig is really all about consistency uh, so that every time you put it in you're going to grind exactly the same angles or, or hollows so I'll tighten up I'm going to use the uh, this end of the allen key and I'm just going to take up the free play and then take up the free play on the other one tightening sequentially is really useful uh, to even out the stresses on the jaws and then I will tighten up a little bit more on here a little bit on this one and that should be enough you see I'm not even using the full length of the allen key it doesn't need a huge amount of force and the blade is now secure in the jig so the well, next thing I'm going to do is to start grinding it we'll go over to the grinder before we start grinding we need to make sure we've got the whetstone grinder set up correctly uh, first thing is it's obviously the other way which does make switching on a little bit difficult but uh, we need to be having the wheel running away from us uh, which means the support the support bar is coming out the back the support bar also needs to be running parallel to the face of the wheel if it's running at an angle you'll grind different angles depending on where you are on the wheel and it's quite a subtle effect but the whole point of this jig is that everything lines up exactly each time you put it on so it's worth spending a bit of time getting this right i found the best way to uh, to measure this is to use a pair of calipers and i can just check that it's running parallel the actual measurement itself isn't that important but as a reference i'm using two and a half inches 65 millimeters for for this run and then make sure when you're happy with it that it's tightened down and if possible leave that uh, leave that alone don't don't keep adjusting it right so we can now get ready to grind our blade I'll just talk a little bit how it works the wheel of course will be running away from you so the blade is going to be pulled this way so although you could put the disc on this side it will always tend to run away so we'll have the, the disc behind the bar which will lock it in place and keep everything keep everything true uh, and then it's simply a question of traversing along the along the blade until we get to the tip if you keep the same angle the tip will never actually engage now one problem I have found with people is that they'll tend to to make the tip engage they will run the, uh, run the jig in an arc around the disc uh, that doesn't give a consistent grind because you can run different angles to hit the tip which will give a different grind the best way to do it is to let the bar these two bars rotate over each other so you get a rotational action like this and that should always mean that the tip will hit at the same point each time you do it so you get a consistent grind and then simply to do the other side you turn over run the other side now the issue is is that the um, de depending on the grind you will have to make an adjustment to make sure that you are hitting close to the middle of the bevel this is not a new mower knife it's been sharpened by hand and so there's nothing to say that these two bevel angles are exactly the same so we will have to grind um, well one option would be to grind two different angles to hit the middle of each bevel but that rather defeats the object of the jig so what we do in this situation is try and make sure we're 
we've got as close as we can to the center line of both both levels and see where we go so I'll show you what I mean by that I just need to have a black sharpie pen to color this in and you'll be able to see what's happening so I'll just mark up the bevel here and I'll mark up the other face and rather than start the wheel and grind a lot of steel off, all you need to do is place it on and just run it down. Have a look at where you've ended up. You can see that it's pretty close to the middle. Then I'll turn the other face, turn it round, and we'll do the other face. And that too is pretty close to the middle. So really it would be good to go to grind on this. Uh, one thing to watch out for is if the blade has been ground too far back there's a point when you the, the wheel can actually hit the jig and if you grind it away it's never coming back so that's a good reason to start by hand and if there is an issue to correct it early rather than grind it and then find that you've taken a lot off the bottom of the jig. Um, if you do grind the back of the jig what I'd recommend is to colour, I haven't, but if you do, so I recommend to colour it in with pen, so at least you know if you do it again you've, uh, that you've done it, whereas if you leave it shiny, it's very hard to know um, if that's happened. But I'm actually going to show you the grinding process on a different blade. Okay, so we're going to actually do the grinding on this blade, which is one which I've forged. So say it's got distal taper, so it's a bit harder to fit. A trick I've found with blades like this is to use a piece of paper as a gasket. So just a thin strip of paper. We wrap this around the blade and then slide it on in exactly the same way as any other one that we're fitting. And then we do that up. And I'm just going to do take out the slack on one side and then on the other side. The idea being is that we're going to be distorting the jaws so that they follow the taper of the blade. And we want to do that quite slowly so it, it moves into place uh, a bit easier. And so that's gone on. I'm just getting a little tweak each time. And this works well because paper uh, is inherently a lot less slippy than steel on steel. Uh, and also if there's any lumps or bumps the paper will take that up. And all we need to do now is tear off the paper. See that's attached. So we can now start grinding. Uh, this is a blade which has been ground flat but not hollow. And we is, this has been left at the same setting as for the Mora 106 I just showed you. So I'm going to just check that uh, it suits uh, this grind. So exactly the same thing. Put this on here and just turn the wheel. So we're right on the back of the bevel there. And on the other side we should be on the back of the bevel as well. Yes. So that means we're grinding too shallow of an angle to line up. So we need to move this wheel forwards, um, the disc forwards. It's actually not been done up too tightly, so I can just twist and push it forwards a bit and try again. Now there, I'm at the front of a blade, the front of the bevel. On this side, I'm just about on the middle of a bevel. So it's not lined up 100%, but it's very close. So I'm going to split the difference and move it back fractionally and then at this point I can tighten it up a little bit more so it's not going to shift and this should be ready to grind.
So a couple of things to note there is that this is grinding just about perfectly down the center of the bevel, which is originally set. This is grinding a little bit towards the edge, so it's, it's going to work from the edge back, but it's not going to take long, whereas this one is pretty much on the center. A uh, few things about what I'm doing when I'm grinding is that one hand is holding gently here to make sure I don't inadvertently put the arc on it. And then I tend to support with my fingers here uh, and I find that easier than trying to hold it at a distance. So I'm just applying pressure. I'm not pressing hard uh, to grind. So I'll just do another couple of passes. should be able to see a burr which is formed here so I have actually hit the edge but there's a little bit more work to do um, but you can see it's forming very quickly and this is going from flat to hollow um, and not necessarily the right flat angles whereas the next time you put this in it will jig up perfectly to the same angle and you'll just be putting a hollow back in an old hollow so it'll be much quicker so this first time is the slowest time you can see it's really going quite quick i'm not going to show you the whole grinding sequence because it's it will take longer than you'll probably want to watch but i'll just show you a few tricks uh, for example you can see here that i need to grind a bit more in this area and how i do that is i if i'm teaching it i always said that you want to flip it over and then put your finger over the area that you want to grind and I'll turn the machine on which is probably the most tricky part of the operation and then when you turn it over your fingers in the right place apply pressure and you can see you can see very quickly I've ground that section away. Uh, it's just a question of working backwards and forwards, turning it regularly until the bevels are matched and even and uh, you'll get a, uh, a perfect hollow grind. I've finished the grind, it didn't take very long but uh, you, you can see that I've got a nice smooth grind from the tang to the tip and I've balanced the bevels so that they're pretty much the same width either side because of a distal taper they actually taper towards the tip but the angle the included angle is going to be pretty constant because of the nature of the jig just say a very quick bit about this wheel uh, we'll be covering grinders and wheels uh, in a different video i'm using a, a a wheel which can be run dry and also this grinder will run quite fast if i ran it wet at this speed it'd be spraying water everywhere so that's one of the reasons i'm running it dry uh, and also it's quicker because uh, you, the, the quicker I can get this done, uh, the better the point of view of the video. Uh, it's also quite a coarse wheel, so the grind is quite, is quite coarse. But if we're going to be hollowing, um, if we're going to be sharpening across the hollows, then the actual grit which has been used to grind it out is of little consequence. Uh, but again, we'll be doing another video on sharpening and another video on wheels. Uh, but this is a result of a, another couple of minutes of work on this wheel and we've got a hollow grind set. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how to take it out. I know that sounds a bit patronising, but actually it is possible to damage the jaws of the uh, jig at this point. So what can happen is people hold on to the handle and try and undo. And if you do that, and this has got very tight or been put in too tight, you're putting a lot of force through and you can actually bend the jaws of the jig at this point, it can flip out. So the best way to do it is to make sure you've got your knife over a, a safe surface and hold on to the body of the jig and undo it like this, this one. Quite often when you undo one, it will make the other one tighter. Uh, but this is now come loose. 
this one just get tight now. Now take it out, discard the paper, and yes, it's really not that difficult, but it is possible to get it wrong. So this now means next time you put the blade in, it's going to be jigged up to exactly the same point. So when you need to resharpen, you'll hit the middle of these bevels, as long as your support bar on the whetstone grinder is in the same place, and as long as this hasn't been moved. If you uh, think that you're going to move it, one option is to, to measure it and write it down somewhere, but I'm not particularly good at keeping notes like that. So what I would recommend, if it's, I mean, uh, if you've got a blade which you're not particularly, or a knife which is not uh, too dear to you, if you were to mark on it like this, how far, how far out the jig is, then next time you get it, you can set it up very quickly. So that's what I recommend, uh, particularly if you're teaching and had a stack of blades, uh, this could work. If you want to grind them to different angles, if you want to grind them all to the same angle, you could just leave this set up. But uh, if you did want to note one blade had a different grind on it, that's the safest way because you can just put it back in and go back to that every time. There are some limitations to this jig, which, um, which I will point out. If you've got a blade which has been ground back for a long way and the bevel is uh, coming back towards the spine, so you'll reach a point where it's not safe to grind because you're going to grind the jig away. So when you reach that point when this gap recedes to less than about two millimetres, you want to check very carefully and you will reach a point where you'll start to touch the jig. At that point it's time to stop. There's not really anything else you can do about it. You can't, if you try and hold it with an even shorter grip like this, uh, it's just going to flip out. Uh, other issues are, as I say, if there's, uh, it's not got an even taper or the blade just is meant to be flat but isn't very even, but a paper, say the paper gasket, works very well for taking up, taking that up. Uh, another thing which can happen is that if you like doing push cups on your blade, quite often people will round the tang. Um, it's not a major issue if it's just been had the corners softened, but if it's been rounded massively, then you no longer have a flat surface for the jaws to grip on. So if it's been rounded too much, either it's, it's not going to work or you could try and square it back off to some extent to get back to good metal. But that, those are limitations, but there's not really any way around it. The jig has to work by gripping on the spine of the blade. So, but if you follow this, uh, this, this is where you'll see the real benefit of the jig is that each time you put it in, you're going to come back to exactly the same point and make really great consistent grinds. In the next video, I'll be talking about how you sharpen the hollow ground to finish it off because it's actually there's quite a big burr on this and this isn't ready to go yet but the jig this is all the work that you can do with the jig um, and there'll be another video talking about different options uh, what type of whetstone grinder we recommend and what type of wheels uh, I'll say now but it will work with virtually anything it'll work obviously with a, a normal um, a normal stone wheel wet it'll work with these uh, wheels these CBN wheels that we have uh, wet or dry so uh, there's a lot of options which are open. Right, that just about wraps it up. Uh, but the point I would like to drive home is just how easy this jig is to use. Recently, we had a group of carvers over and we introduced them to the jig. And once they got the hang of it and ground their first blade, they then tended to go through their tool rolls and grind all their straight blades uh, because that's what this jig will do. It's so easy to set up and you can then run through a whole series of blades and get a really good consistent grind on it. Uh, and I hope you'll be able to too. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, then please let us know and we'll do our best to answer them.